How long have I got? Oh, a couple of hours. Half past two, isn't it? That's what you said. Well, if I said so, it is so, right? Yes, miss. Better be a mother coming out there. Oh, well. He's on his own now, then, like I am. Henry Brassington. All right. He's on his own. Ross is back for the funeral. Mm. Passed me in his car as I came from the works. Been in the Middle East somewhere. Out there on business for the parent company. Had trouble getting hold of him, I believe. Well, he could only have just got here at that rate. Do you ever hear from him these days? What, Ross Brassington? Oh, I. Well, why should I? Good heavens. It was years ago, all that. He's probably married, for all I know. We'd have heard. Oh, he's not the marrying kind, isn't Ross, I reckon. That's what you reckon, is it? Well, how can it be? Where would he find out more delightful than you? Apart from your politics, that is. Sarah's were leaving to pick you up when I got to the house. I said I'd do it for her. You've not seen Dad, then? No. How is he? How you'd expect him to be. Living with it. Living with it. She was a wonderful woman. Pity we didn't tell her so, isn't it? Well, I didn't. I loved her, she knows. Knew I did. I just bloody well took her for granted, didn't I? We all do it all the time. He knew her better than any of us. Cared for her. You used to think the opposite. That business about the woman at the Black Lion. I was wrong. That was nothing. Nothing that changed Mum's feelings for him anyway, and that's what counts, isn't it? He'd like to hear you saying this, you know. I won't, though, will I? It's truce time, isn't it? It'll all start up again after... after the funeral. We've never really got on, have we? We're different. It's not a fault to be different. Yeah, it's different, but... Uh, chips off the old block, in an odd sort of way. Flesh and blood. You're only aware of it at a time like this. I thought you were upstairs. Where's Max? I drove him down to the works a couple of hours ago. Ross has gone to fetch him. Ross? He's here? Yes, 20 minutes ago. Lou, you were upstairs. He said not to disturb you. He'd go and fetch Max. Yeah, the damn clock stopped. What's the time? 12.30. Two damned hours to wait, then. Uh, yeah, shh, I, I can't seem to sit down. <laughs> it was the same the day we were married. I, I couldn't sit. I, I didn't know what the hell to do, to do, to do with myself. Come into the kitchen with me. I can't stand it in the kitchen. Sorry. I can't stand it in here, more or less, but the kitchen is going to take a bit of getting used to again. Let me make you a drink, then. A drink? Mm, tea, coffee. No, no, no. What are you up to now, then, eh? Get this down, you. Name. 
Breath or smell. Oh, let it. It's what you need. She'd have prescribed it. Ugh. You like her, do you know how that? That's a nice compliment. No, it's a fact, as he never told you that, our Mac. No, but then I haven't really got her qualities, yeah. you know. No, I'm impatient. I've got an awful temper. I'm not really like her at all. You've got an awful lot of what people call common sense, when it's about as common as solid gold. You care. You like her and what matters. Is he treating you any better, our Mac? These last few days, he's been almost like he used to be. Oh, almost, these last few days. We're all the same, you know, men. I can't stand no more of what's coming now. Oh, Dorothy. She needs you. She's not grown up, that's all. She stands there, five years old, touching me, sucking her thumb. Dad! Henry's sending one of the lads for me. And for me, he'll have to take you as well. Why shouldn't he, anyway? We've lived opposite each other long enough. Nay, hey, I can walk. I always have. I have two legs inside this cloth stuff that runs from my waist to my feet. Feared of being seen in the boss's car, are you? And to do him no damn good, neither. I'd not be convenient much longer if they took me to be in Henry's pocket. Hey, you know what they call me now in the newspapers, chaps like me? The moderate element I am. Others must be a bad lot. Aye, militants they call them. I was a militant 40 years back. 40 years, eh? Is that how long it takes to learn sense? I talk more sense then than I do now, I been... You were less as a bit of a wild one, they tell me. That's what they call me then, wild one. It's only history repeating oh. itself. Oh, what do you know about it? You weren't even born. She listens to you and me, and she can see that none's changed. What happened to a young lad that ran off from school? Young guy, you mean? Oh. Max's lad. Ah. Well, it appears he's chose to sling his hook three days before they went holiday in. So I'm told. Well, it's scarcely any use him sending him back for one day. You should have him at your school. Then he could go home for hot dinner. Mm. A comprehensive for one of the bosses, sons? There are one or two, you know. Oh, Dad's too bloody mean to pay for them, eh? Well, maybe they still believe in the system, like I used to. Maybe they just haven't heard the bad news. Mrs. Brassington, what are you doing home? I've been all round works for you. I've gone to Jane Brassington's funeral. Did nobody tell you? Hmm. Have they fixed a date for this meeting yet? I dare say we'll have it tomorrow. I mean, we've all got troubles, but life has to go on, you know. Nobody's been laid off yet, for all the rumours. Oh, we've to wait till it happens, have we? He'll be back in his office tomorrow. There'll be nothing done before then. Strike at Rastrix is still on, isn't it? No other orders coming in. Production cut back. Are we to do nothing, then? Hi. I thought I'd happen to find you here. I reckon to come and collect you before the rush starts. Ruth, Les. You've got another passenger here. No, I'll... Uh, I'll go to the church. I'll... Uh, I'll walk. There's a seat if you want one. You're very welcome to leave from the house with the rest of us. Nay. Nay, I'll uh, do as I planned. You'll come with us. Jim knows what's best, Mother. I care what to know about myself. Me. Not what folks say about me. You've no understanding of politics, Mabel. Has anybody? Go well, one, suit yourself. Look, take other arm, will you? Cos I can't use my stick with this hand. He always takes wrong arm. Fraternising with the enemy, Dad. You're very welcome to leave from the house. Oh, shut up, you. Did a bit yourself one time, didn't you? Ross Brassington. The enemy? In your terms, you're my enemy, brother. A pair of you. Leave off it, will you? There's some at the works as they're using this funeral as an excuse to delay things. You'd have used your mother's funeral in a similar way, would you? No? Then don't credit others for having less care for their own than you have, not till you've proof. I'm off. I'll see you later.
you go into this funeral? No. Does that please you? It's nothing to me. No, I just thought with you being at home. Half a term. Oh, I, I forgot. How's Betty and the kids? Oh, Betty's all right. You see more of the kids than I do. Still in your class, I think. Until the end of term. Doing all right? They're trying. What does that mean? It means what it says. They're trying. Oh, they're bright enough, aren't they? Average? Only average. And what's wrong with being average or less than average, if that's the best that you can do? Someone I wanted to ask you. Could you uh, put somebody up here for me, you and Dad? Just for a week or two, till he finds proper digs. What's wrong with your house? We've two bedrooms and two kids. Mm. How could we? Have you spoken to Dad? He told me I've got to ask you. Well, he's right. I do do a job, you know. Who is it? He's from Scotland. Taking a job at the works. Mm. <laughs> One of your labour lads, is he? All right. Well, I asked. I'll fix him up somewhere else. Don't bother yourself. Well, if it's only for a week or two... That's what I said, a week or two, while he looks round. And providing he keeps his politics out of the house. Oh, I'll warn him it's Indian country. I'm not an Indian or a pale face or anything else. If you must give me a label, and of course you must, you can call me a liberal with a small L. Ah, a nothing, you mean. <laughs> well, I'd rather be a nothing than any of the smelly little orthodoxies competing for our souls today. That's a quote, by the way, from a socialist. George Orwell died 1950. That turncoat. What do you know about him? Well, enough. Oh, I bet you've never read a word he's written. When did you last read the Bible? Yours, I mean, Karl Marx. Via Lenin, via Trotsky and via Stanley Thistlethwaite. What's Stanley Thistlethwaite got to do with it? Well, he's the only socialist I know around here who's actually read the master. Oh, well, I practice. I don't preach. You wouldn't practice medicine without studying it, would you? So why politics? A politics less important. Oh, what a family. Yes, absolutely typical, aren't we? All that nasty stuff in the woodshed that you find when people will insist on a confrontation. You've always been jealous. Jealous of what, for God's sake? Me being happily married. What you'd have liked to be. Hmm. I wouldn't drop that at a party meeting when one of your emancipated, battling socialist women freedom fighters are around. Oh, I've got to get back to work. Oh, God help us. You think I'm bloody stupid, don't you, eh? Just because you had the education and I didn't. You had the same education that I did. Up to the point where hard work started to count. Don't you chuck your lack of application at me and expect me to feel sorry for you. You? Sorry for me? You'll have Dot after you. She sniffed Henry out. How can you at a time like this, she said. Is he back yet? No, they've just come in. Where is Dorothy? Upstairs, lying down. Oh. Mother's here. Uh, she's talking to Annie. In the I kitchen. forgot you were fetching her. Ross rang from the works. He said he called for her on his way back with Max. I'll see if Annie's coping. Have you been to the works this morning? Oh, I called in earlier. Max was there. Have Rastrick's driver's gone back yet? No, I expect two of the other ready mixed plants now. I wasn't supposed to tell you that. Oh, I'll have it to deal with when the day's over. Life goes on, lad. The only way you can strike against life is to shove your head in a gas oven. Have the shop stewards been told? I uh, left it with Max. Oh, they've not then. He saved his troubles for a rainy day. I got it out. Annie can manage. I can, Mrs. Brassington. It's only the family coming back, Graham. They should have had a proper meal at Masonic Hall, same as everyone else does. My best glass will not be used till after I'm dead, neither. And not there to say nay. I'll lay the salads out in the pantry. Grant. Shut your eyes and open your mouth and see what God sends you. Sending you back to that school, Larry. We haven't discussed it yet, and anyway, how can he answer with that thing in his mouth? Uh, they all speak with their mouths full these days. Manners are a thing of the past. You're on his side, aren't you? I want him home, of course, but there are other factors to be considered, aren't there? <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'll lay the salads out in the pantry. <laughs> you can't beat a good funeral. <laughs> Uh, 
They must have sent someone for her. You wouldn't mind taking this thing back for me, would you? I'd like to walk. It'll not take more than ten minutes. Need the exercise, do you? I need that as well. Too many parties, too many business lunches. If you knew how I missed those half hours we all used to have in the pub before Sunday lunch. He's walking up. Walking, is he? he? Seems to be affecting us all in different ways, doesn't it? What? Part of our lives that we've lost. Who came for her? Your father. They've not been gone long. They wanted to take Dad, but it seems that he still has an aversion to riding with the bosses. He's that generation. Out of date, do you mean? No, I didn't, as a matter of fact. Not in a derogatory way. What are you smiling at? You. Me? Well, us then. I mean, f four years on, three lines into the conversation, and we're already heading for an argument. I wasn't in the least. Well, not intentionally. And it's five years, not four. Oh. I'm sorry about your mother. Yeah. You were abroad? Yes, I was abroad. You're with... Uh... One of the other companies, now, Dad says. I'm with a parent company. I don't understand these things. It owns all the others. I'm a bit wiser, but not much. They manage their own affairs, generally speaking, in principle, that mm. is. But Big Brother still watches. Some people might say so. Diplomat. Didn't used to be. Sign of approaching middle age, perhaps. Where are you? Not a bit. I'm rather looking forward to it, in a way. Mm. It's all right for men. They wear better. So we're told. I can't say it's confirmed by what I see. Well, I'll get off, unless you're coming. Well, I heard that it was family only. I don't know. I haven't been to the house yet. Well, only briefly. Seem to be trying to put something off. I don't know what. I'll be here for a day or two. Would you have dinner with me tomorrow, perhaps? No. No? I'm sorry, but no, Ross. Makes it a long wait, don't it? Well, you might as well wait here as at home. Fetch me for something to do, did you? Yes. Don't start getting ratchety, Mother. You've come to see me less and less these last I've days. had more on. I know. How do you know? Jim Turner tells me. Mm. It was all a mistake, you know. A mistake? What was a mistake? The quarry. The works. I watched it grow, but I'd have been happier without it. Doing what? Living like ordinary folk, same as we come from. When your father was alive, it was quarry this, quarry that. Things going wrong. No restfulness in life. No contentment. He was a working man at heart. He worked just as hard before he started the quarry, and for what? For eight days. Well, it wasn't work that finished him. It was worry. You can have too little in life. You can have too much. And you can have enough. It was when we'd enough we were happiest. You lived in a different world from what we do now, Mother. Well, I'm not saying we didn't. I'm just saying how it was. Your clock stopped. I know, I know. Oh, sorry. Come here. Sorry for what? What's happened? Can't cut your tongue, has it? Feeling in the way, are you? Well, you're not in the way, are you? Come on, sit yourself down. What's your aim in life? Want to be like your dad, do you? At the works, you mean? That way you want? No. 
Here's one you've lost. I wouldn't mind working the crane that feeds the mills. You don't fancy being a manager, then? No. Why not? Because he's got more sense. That's why I not. I'll answer for him himself. What's wrong with being a manager? Nothing, Grandad, if you like that sort of thing. Well, no, you'd sooner not be one. I mean, give him a chance, I mean. No, Grandad. Why? It's not much fun, oh, is it? It's not much fun, I see. <laughs> Working the crane that feeds the mills, that'd be fun, I suppose, would it? Be a bit boring in time, I suppose. Oh, damn right it would. <laughs> Who gives you these ideas? Nobody, Grandad. I see. You just draw your own conclusions from what you see, do you? And you've come to the conclusion that being a management is not much fun. Well, who said it should be? Or working cranes, for that matter. You work to pay for your fun, lad. That's how things are. It's what's called a fact of life. I know. Uh, what's the argument about? <laughs> I'm not arguing. You are. Yes, you are. I'm not. Well, shut up, then. I wasn't arguing. Well, if you weren't then, you are now. Anyway, he's got enough trouble without you getting on at him, have not you, love? Sending you back to that school, are they? I suppose so. It's a shame. It's a fact of life, Mother. You keep out of it. It's a fact of life. He doesn't like it. You sling your hook again if you feel you need to. Now, that's a fine thing to say. A fine thing if it couldn't. What is it? A prison? Guy, your father's left a wreath in the boot of the car. Could you get it? Yes, yes, I'll get it. It's rather cold out there. Are you going to be warm enough? Well, if I'm not, I shall let it be known. I've never been one for suffering in silence. Well, but you know better thought of for it. I'm off into the kitchen. I had nothing of a breakfast. I was worried about him earlier. He's only behaving as he thinks is expected of him. It's already in the dining room, more or less. There's some cars coming up the drive. Better take this in. George and Rita Dobson, cousins on her mother's side, claim to be a long-lived family. Uh, well, I saw mother and father out. I'll see her out and all. Ross. Oh. Oh, Rita. Dorothy wants you. See you in a minute. Yes. sort of a day. Around the sitting room, Rita, you know the way. Well, I'm not sure that I do. We haven't been invited here all that often. Nothing to say. Funny sort of a day. Well, of course, it's a funny sort of a day. It's a funeral. Oh, well, stuff to things and that said at funerals. Nice to be here. Wish we'd come soon. Rita? Oh, well, I must sit down. I feel quite giddy. Sit here. She gets car sick. Brandy? Never touches it. She'd drop dead first. I'll get her a glass of water. I'm going to London again next summer. I booked. What's up with her? She'll be right in a minute. Well, I've paid for a wreath. I'll go make sure it's come. You told me 
she was dead. Who? Well, her. His mother. I thought we'd come here to bury her. Max's mother, I said. You never listen to me, do you? Half I say in life goes by, floats away, floats. It's the same with Max and Ross. Well, you ask them if you don't believe me. You're never there when there was trouble. You just, you just vanish and leave it all to her. You left everything to her. She was that much better at it than I was. I used to stand back because she'd ask me not to come clogging in. What did you ever do for us except pay, pay? Oh, Dorothy, that's unfair. Nay, nay, let it be said, let it come out. Your own will start kicking you one day. That's what you're there for, to be kicked and to pay. Love, they call it. It's true. Ah, it's true. You're the living proof it's true. What I said is true. What did you ever give her of yourself? Just about all of me, one way or another. You'd not know that, though, none of you. We'd a life apart from you lot, you know. You knew nothing of it, nothing. Some people give up living when the kids come as though they were born to do nothing but breed. We didn't, not altogether. Not altogether, we didn't. People are starting to come. Don't go. Not done kicking me yet. I can't help it. You made everything too easy. Nothing has been an effort. I wasn't prepared for this. Ah, you thought we could keep this from you too, did oh. you? That's where I made a mistake. I, yes, I, that's why I stood there and let you kick me. The truth at last. You're all I've got. No, 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 she means flesh and blood, that's what she means. Flesh and blood. I saw your name in marble on the stone back there. Well, cost something nowadays, these stones, with not, inflation. Not many orishas about. It's a rare name. Sounds like a winter cabbage. I've known two or three in my time, but they've all gone now. There's nothing lasts like marble. much liked, am I? Not in the way that people like, well, Sarah. I'm conventional. I'm what people expect me to be. I bore people, I know I do. Well, even you don't like me very much anymore, do you? You just put up with me, just like Dad. Sarah. My name's Dorothy. Grandfather's grave. Why do we perpetuate things when it's over, it's over? Is it? You don't like to think of it that way. I like to think that I'm building for tomorrow. And it's perpetuating something, isn't it? Oh, what? Life, uh, in the end. You mean what we've been lacking, I suppose, these last years? Or isn't that a valid complaint? It's valid. I work to keep things going, to stave off chaos in the hope that better times will come again. Where is Guy? He's over there. You don't want him to go back to school, do you? No, I want him to stay here. Not just because he needs us, both of us. What else have we got in our lives? this time about. Same kind, same week, every year. They stopped about three years ago. We never found out who put them there. 
So when he knew, we didn't. Mystery. It's all a mystery, Jim. Jim? I'll find our Ruth and get back then. Thanks for coming, Jim. We have to talk. Aye, we need to talk. We don't talk enough, not about the things that matter, and by the time you get round to it, it's too late. We wondered where you were staying. He stay with me, he stay in his own home. Where else would he stay? Which is about ready for off. How long <coughs> did it take you? Just over an hour. Hour oh, one for the road. Uh, nay, I'd better not. Yeah, she drives, doesn't she? Oh, she drives. She's a farmer's wife, she has to. No, it's not me driving that worries me. It's uh, being passenger to her. <laughs> Go on, then. <laughs> I'll let them survive it. You know, land has been fetched in a thousand pounds an acre around here. I can show you some other way that's fetched too. And I bet you're still bloody well complaining. You know? We don't get much profit on it when we sell it. Not after tax. Oh, you want jam on it, don't you? Why should you be any different from the rest of us when it comes to tax? <laughs> What's your stock these days? Oh, I'm 85, milking. A couple of hundred sheep on top of calves I'm fattening. Oh. I have a man and a lad to help me. I work seven days a week myself. But I'm contented as I'll ever be, I suppose. How's it with you? Oh, I'm in the wrong job for contentment, George. You're living in Jerusalem and you don't know. Which room? Annie aired yours when she heard you were coming. I'll take this up. Will uh, Ross take over from you when you've done? Ross? Nay, he works for the plan company, no, does our Ross, didn't you know? Oh, he stands to win an empire, not just this little kingdom here. Now, it's Max that's supposed to take over for me. Why? You're another one that thinks I've worked out. There's no reason why you shouldn't take things a bit easier, is there? Do you fear what's to follow in your footsteps? Nay, lad's shaping himself right well. Gets a few daft ideas, but he'll grow out on them. Oh, living in Jerusalem, George, you stop there and don't look over the wall neither. If it comes, it comes, and there's nothing you can do about it. About what? You wouldn't know what I was talking about if I told you. We live in two different worlds, you and me, George. Two and two still makes four in yours, and mine, they can make it come to whatever they want it to add up to. Yeah, they look at the answers at the back of the book, then they work, ask about backwards, and if it doesn't come to what it should, they changed the bloody answer. They met in the canteen at dinner time and formed a committee. We got a committee, I'm convener. They think you and the stewards are soft peddling. They called a meeting for tonight. Sounds like an unofficial strike to me. Who's they? Well, there are about a dozen at the meeting. I don't know who they are. You know who's behind it, though, don't you? Same as I do. You don't need me to tell you if you know, then. Your mate, Reg Brooks. Well, I warned you what the feeling was. Yeah, but a dozen others, they speak for the old bloody workforce, do they? The feeling's going against your dad, even with some of your mates. And you. You've always been against me, haven't you? I've never had to scratch my head over where you've stood, have I? You've fallen behind, Dad. You're out of touch. With what? With the way things are going. The way you'd like them to go, you mean? Both. I'm an embarrassment to you, am I? We live in different times, that's all. Your record will stand for things as they were in your prime. Worked out, am I? You've served your time, that's all. I... I've served my time. Time you'll never know. It's you that lives in the past. Not me. I know. I was there. You went. It's you this old fashioned lad, not me. Everything you've ever had to say about politics I've heard a thousand times over, and yet you think it's all new, don't you? The great new message of the age. Well, I'll tell you what the great new message of the age is. The great new message of the age, lad, is that there is no bloody message. So work that one out, eh? Get your teeth in that. There, I'd be wasting my breath. 
enjoyed that, did you? Warmed your ears, did it? No. I meant what I said, you know. I've stood back at the works because of him, and I'll stand back no more. Well, you've got the right to push him out, have you? We shall find out whether I have or not, shan't we? I got to yard gate. Damn it, he's gone. Came back to explain the new philosophy, did you? Blast his eyes. I'd sooner have bred a known mouth than a know all. He won't do it. You know that. It's all talk. Huh. Maybe not this time. But I can feel the day coming. I can feel it coming. Have you seen Guy? He's up in my room with a book. We're just going. Uh, Dad's had a drop to drink. You keep an eye on him. In what respect? He's more cut up than he seems. And you think I might upset him? What? Not intentionally, no, of course not. It's just he gets a bit belligerent these days when he's had a drink or two. But when did he not? He might start something just to get his mind off things, you know. Oh, fan the old flames, you mean? Something like that. I'll stay on my guard. I gather young guys slung his hook from school. You like that, do you? I hated the bloody place, so did you. We stuck it out, though. Good for us, you mean? Iron in the soul, moral fibre and that sort of thing. There's precious little of it about these days. And so we keep being told. You'll be sending him back, then? Yes, I think so. I'll get him for you. Thanks. Guy's upstairs. Ross is fetching him. What's he up to now? Getting me something for a vase, he said. There's a damn great garden like our own. He's a bit sloshed. I know. Well, humour him, then. Do you think I need you to teach me humanity where he's concerned? Well, sometimes I do, yes. Because I want him to pack up at the works to retire. No, not necessarily that, but the way you go about it, well, yes, if you really want to know. That was when she was alive. That made a difference, did well, it? You couldn't hurt him when she was alive. He bounced like rubber. It's gone out of him these last few days. Credit me with seeing that much. I was there when she died. I watched part of him die, too. That's something you'll never have to suffer with me, isn't it? I envied him for what he'd had. I suppose it's my fault that you haven't got it. No. My own. It, it's not beyond having yet, is it? Sometimes you're so honest. And you go away from it. to wander around the garden, a bit here, a bit there, and then she'd come into the house with a bunch like this in her hand that looked as she bloody well be weeding. She'd sort it all out in her vase, and it would look as, as though she'd seen the pattern before she picked it. I've tried to do the same as she did. See what you can do with them, right? Yes, yes, I will. She brought us all together for one day, didn't she? Uh, that'll last me till young Cassie does my shopping. Don't take much to keep this old plant alive, you know. Just water it sparingly and keep it away from drops. <laughs> I'd have thought you'd have been off up there to take charge of your Henry. Now he's on his own. No one grabbed me. And did not want. Not in the same house. Oh, no, we know where we stand with each other. Just because we're same flesh and blood doesn't make for that word, you know, that they're always using nowadays. Compatibility. That's it. Comfortability. Aye. That's all we lack. Comfortability. I'll see you to your door. What? Four steps. <laughs> if I drop between here and there, you'll hear my bones clanking on pavement. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Comfortability. That's all we lack. Who brought her back? Ross, I think. I was upstairs. Oh, you didn't see him then? Yes, I did, as a matter of fact. He came to pick her up here, after you'd gone. Came into the house, did he? Hmm. Union objections. Just because I'll not take a lift from Henry Brassington, you think I've a mind as narrow as Spink's Ginnell, don't you? No. Well, don't insult me, then. Oh, what do you have to say? Oh, don't tell me. Mind my own damn business. He wanted to take me out to dinner, as a matter of fact. You go? No. You told him so? Yes. Oh. You know what you're doing, I suppose. Well, you sound disappointed. You're on this earth because of me. You've used your brain to make yourself independent. You depend on me no more than I depend on this bloody table. Look, that's not true. There's truth in it. And there's truth in somebody else. A bit of dependability on somebody would do you good. I don't want to leave you to walk through life on your own. Life's as black as pit bottom on your own. You stop going out on Fridays, then? You've noticed, have you? Married, was he? Mind my own damn business. All over, is it? Was that on secret list, too? Pick it up. It might be Prince Charming. Ruth Turner? Yes? Oh, yes. Yes, he did. Mm. No, that'll be all right. Saturday week. Fine. Oh. Right, see you then. That was the man that Les asked us to put up till he gets himself digs. Oh, you told Les we would, did you? I told him he to ask you. Well, I suppose we'll have to now. I just don't like having strangers in the house, that's all. You could have said no. I told him it was up to you. Oh, well, he won't be for long. West. West. Put another one in there for me, man. I was in two minds where they'd have another. I damn well knew you'd want one as well. Oh, Dorothy been giving you your instructions, is she? There's a line, Dad, as well you know. I don't want you to cross it and be ill. Oh, well. I'm well this side of it so far. You're having one, can I keep you company? <laughs> Would you call that a measure? Yeah, you wouldn't last long in a pub. Your bar would be empty. They'd all be at Top House. Dad... I can always get me own, you know. I'm above legal age limit. And I'm not in my second childhood yet. Choose what some might think. You do much drinking in London? Work or pleasure? Have well, you got time for pleasure? Not much. How's that lass you're living with? I can never get her name, because your mother always called her that woman. She never fancied you living above the brush. It's uh, coming to an end. Oh, coming to an end, is it? Oh, well, just as well you didn't wed, then. There's no trouble, no obligation. She can show the door, can't you? She'll slam it on me when she's ready. Oh, you're hard to live with, are you? Maybe. Or is it work or temperament? Both, maybe. You don't have to feel too sorry for her. She's got her own job. She doesn't need me in that sense. Uh, well, a man wants to be needed. Makes him feel justified. That was the trouble, was it, between you and Jim Turner's lass? She's independent. She's beholden to no man. I can't say it. I blame her. There's a lot of right bloody specimens around these days call themselves men. You've had to cut back on output because of a driver's strike at Rastrix, Max tells me. Change the subject, Henry. Is it serious? What's your interest? I work for the holding company. So we're on to business now, are we? You're thinking of closing kilns yet? Laying people off? I'm not, and I'm sure Max is. If there's a fallback in take from the plant, there'll be no option, will there? That's what he'd say. I know. That's why I said it. What's your reaction? Not to get a rush of blood to the head. Overreacting, they call it nowadays, don't they? That's a word you used when you were taking sides against me three or four years back. I took notice, you'll see. 
Bill Summers said that you'd be covetous. Years after you'd seen the Arabs, he, he rang me up when he heard about your mother. Convergent sympathy, they call it, don't they? What did he mean? Didn't he tell you? Did he tell you he told me? I came straight here from the airport. You could have phoned me. You must have done when you were abroad. He told me about Mum, that's all. You don't think he'd have bothered me with work in the circumstances. What do you take him for? Oh, a white man. Only I'm a bloody Indian. White man speaks with forked tongue. He always did, did Bill. That's where he got what it is. That and a lot of help from me. Dad, don't leave me alone. I need it. I'm in pain. You should have gone to another company. You should have gone to another group. I don't want your hand against me, least of any man. But what makes you think it will be? I've come to see something's your way, you've come to see something's mine. We can work together on that basis, can't we? Ha! So I was right. What I was after knowing. We are to work together. Bill Summers wants it. You bloody lied to me, didn't you? You have spoken with him. No, I've not, damn you! Ah, here it comes. I know he wanted me to come up here, that's all. Because of what's happened. That's all I know. I shall know more next week. He's used you because you're a man in the middle. A middle man, able to talk to the unions in a way you both understand. How is he going to use you now? Nobody uses me, not in that way. It's a dog's life in the middle, Ross. It's what you make it. Oh, Dad, for God's sake! For her sake. I'll take some water with this one. For her sake. I used to come back here. And you, or Max, have been tearing me apart. Back to her, who cared for us all. Where do I go now, Ross? Last Christmas you came back after you'd all been gone for the term. I went into the kitchen Christmas Eve after all three of you had gone to bed. She was there, your mother, doing her stuff. The last person in God's earth she wanted to know was me. Stood at the sink, side of her face to me. It's dark, but she paints her own pictures at night, does your mother. I fancied other women in my time, more than one. There was something in a woman's eyes, the way she holds herself, the way her hair hangs. As if you were looking at something precious. It was. <coughs> Leave off me! Leave off me! Ross! 